I don't like Batman. You what? That's probably not what you want to hear from someone that's about to review a Batman game, but I'd counter that with the argument that this isn't really a Batman game. I should probably clarify that I don't dislike Batman, I'm just very indifferent about him. He has grown on me a lot after playing the Arkham games in preparation for this, but all of that is to say that for as indifferent as I am about the Batman himself, I absolutely love all of his sidekicks and side characters. I feel like they're all so unique and bounce off of him in such different and fun ways, and most of my favorite moments from the Arkham games or getting to play as Nightwing or Catwoman either instead of or with Batman. So you can probably imagine how excited I was when I found out that there was going to be an Arkham game with four of his most iconic partners. I really feel like I'm in a special position to like this game, and I enjoyed the majority of the 40 hours I spent on it, but it's not perfect. Okay, so normally I would put the combat section later on in the video, but I feel like this is the most divisive and interesting part of this game. I think that it's very important to try to go into Gotham Knights viewing it as its own game instead of a continuation of the Arkham games, and in my opinion, it's gotten a lot of unfair slack because people haven't been separating them. But I will be comparing them a lot, specifically in this section of the video, because the other games get so much right with their combat and I think it's a nice baseline. So the general consensus is that the combat in this game is not as good as the combat in the previous Arkham games, and I would agree with that. But I was thinking about why as I played through this, and this is what I came up with. When you're fighting in the original Arkham trilogy, it kind of feels like you're this unstoppable raid boss and the enemies are the underdogs. Batman has so many gadgets and techniques at his disposal that even in a room surrounded by 20 enemies, you never really feel like you're not in control of the situation. When people say these games make you feel like Batman, there's really no other way to describe that. But combat in Gotham Knights feels like the opposite of that. You are the underdog here and it's your job to figure out how you're going to make it out of an encounter. There's nothing inherently wrong with this and I think it can work wonderfully in the right setting like in Resident Evil or The Last of Us, but it doesn't work here. If there was ever an encounter with 20 enemies at once in this game, you literally wouldn't get to play. And I can't say that I ever really felt like Red Hood or Batgirl while tearing through the streets of Gotham here. I think the omission of a counter system plays a huge part in why the game feels like this. I was immediately skeptical once I found out they removed countering and I was definitely right to be. You don't immediately miss the ability to counter, but once you get a little into the game and you're encountering some of the tougher enemy types, it really starts to feel like you spend more time dodging than fighting. There's sort of a counter with the perfect dodge and perfect attack mechanic, but you have to completely stop your offense in order to use them. It also leads to this really weird problem where you want to prioritize your targets and take them out one at a time, but because your only defensive option is dodging, it forces you out of position. I noticed in some of the early release footage that they were peppering damage onto a bunch of enemies instead of taking them out one at a time, and I thought it was just how they were choosing to play the game but it's kind of how you have to play. There were so many times where I had 5 or 6 enemies that I just needed to land one more punch on but I couldn't get to them because as soon as I got close I'd have to dodge again. The system is easily at its worst when you're in an encounter with multiple projectile enemies. It seems like they purposely wait for you to start attacking to start aiming at you. And it sucks because I actually really like the perfect dodging mechanic, but the entire combat system feels one dimensional without the option to counter. Like in Arkham Knight, if you see a regular attack coming, you have the option to counter it, dodge it, or stun them before it hits. Here, literally your only option is to dodge if you don't want to take the damage. And again, it doesn't make me feel like any of these characters when I have to stop and dodge every 3 attacks. Plus, not having a counter doesn't even make sense from a lore standpoint. You're really telling me Batman never taught any of his sidekicks how to reverse someone's offense? You're telling me this brick shithouse of a human being can't take a punch from someone half his size. I think a big chunk of this game's problems would go away if they had chosen to implement both a counter and the perfect dodge mechanic. Gotham Knights is an ability-focused combat system which is a lot less freeform than the Arkham Trilogy where you could basically spam your gadgets as much as you wanted just at the cost of losing your combo. Here you've got your basic light, heavy, and ranged attacks that you use to build meter required for your unique big ticket abilities. Some abilities cost 1 bar, some 2, and all 4 heroes have a unique heroic attack that goes on cooldown after use. I think they chose this system to stand apart from the Arkham Trilogy a little more, and I like it for the most part, but I think they made a really dumb decision here too. You can and will take damage when you're using your abilities and grab attacks. It's not as much of a problem with more mobile heroes like Nightwing or Robin, but Red Hood who has multiple abilities that force him to stand still, and has a skill tree that focuses on grabbing, really gets shit on because of this. If you get hit with the wrong move while you're using an ability or grabbing, it can straight up knock you out of it, which wastes your meter. And what makes it worse is that they already had this problem solved in the Arkham games. The enemies will kind of stop and wait around while you do a takedown, and they won't start attacking again until you have enough time to counter. It doesn't really make sense, but it makes the 
games more fun, so it doesn't matter. Why didn't we keep this here? The last thing that I think really hurts the combat is that there are just too many different enemy types. There are four or five different factions that all have unique enemies and it just starts to be a bit much. This is kind of a tricky one because I know what they were going for here. More enemy types should keep the combat from getting stale, but since they all can't be basic grunts, they start to get overloaded and not fun to fight. You have brutes that have uninterruptible attacks and projectiles. These guys that leave puddles after their ground pound so you just can't fight them, and there are three or four different enemies that can just decide they want to stop taking damage and escape out of your combo. That's a problem. Now that I've dogged the combat for however long it takes me to save four paragraphs, I do want to say that when you aren't fighting some of the BS enemies and everything is clicking, it is really fun. All four of these characters play really differently, and I think they've done a fantastic job of implementing core aspects of each of them into how they fight. Nightwing is an acrobat, so naturally he's very mobile but doesn't hit the hardest of the four. Red Hood looks like this, so obviously he hits hard and slow. He's also really unique because he's both a grappler and a zoner, which is something that you never really see. Tim uses a lot of gadgets, and since he's the smallest, is the most stealthy. And Barbara's a single target DPS monster. But they've added throwbacks to her time as Oracle and to her kid as well. She can shut down enemy weapons and remotely activate some environmental hazards. All four characters have skill trees that you can use to build them specifically how you'd like. There are some trash nodes that just like increase crit damage, but most of them give actual gameplay bonuses, and I'd mark down the build diversity as an overall plus. If you like Robin but don't care for stealth, which I am going to briefly mention doesn't feel like its own fully fleshed out mechanic, you aren't forced to play him like that. You can invest in giving him more combo damage and uses for his gadgets and completely ignore the stealth tree. The animation team also really went crazy here. Just like the Arkham games, Gotham Knights rewards you for timing your button presses correctly during combos, but you actually get different animations for perfectly timing your attacks. You never really get to see the full string since you have to dodge every two seconds, but it is a nice touch. The takedown and grab strike animations never get old and are all really cinematic. They even do the thing where you'll get unique takedowns using the environment depending on where you are when you use them. An integral part of the combat in Gotham Knights is the RPG-focused gear system, which I kind of have mixed feelings about. I don't feel like it actively hurts the game, but I also don't feel like the game really needed it. And that's coming from someone who on record has stated how much I like grinding for gear. You've got your suit, which actually changes how your character looks, your main and ranged weapon, and each piece of gear can have up to three mod slots on it. The mod slots might sound like a secondary priority, but you've got to stay on top of all your gear here. I was underprepared for my boss fight with Mr. Freeze, and this shit took 30 minutes. I was pleasantly surprised with the level of customization given to us here. Apart from each character having a decent selection of suits, you can also slightly personalize each one. The adjustments are just enough to keep the overall theme of each suit the same, while giving players the options to change out the parts that they maybe aren't crazy about. Not every suit is created equally, and I would say that Robin by far wins the fashion contest, with Nightwing coming in dead last. But I had a lot of fun discovering each of the new suits for our heroes. The suits are kind of hurt by the RPG mechanics though. Since they're part of a gear system, there's inevitably gonna come a time where you come across a suit that's uglier but has better stats. Fortunately, there's kind of a transmog system. You can only transmog into the default design of a suit, and I don't really know why. Like, I love Nightwing's metal suit with this mask, but I wouldn't be caught dead wearing this. What is that? Nitpicking aside, something is always better than nothing. The entire campaign of Gotham Knights can be played with a friend. Just one, which is weird because there are four knights. The way that the co-op works is that each player can kind of do their own thing in an open world Gotham, so it makes sense why they didn't allow four players with the system. But it's still a shame, especially considering how fun the multiplayer is. I only did a couple hours of campaign co-op, and I had a blast just running around the city taking out bad guys with someone by my side. About a month after its release, Gotham Knights launched its four-player co-op mode. I specifically wanted to wait until this came out to make this video, which is part of the reason why this didn't come out closer to release. Heroic Assault is a simple dungeon crawler that mostly focuses on combat. You'll clear rooms of baddies, walk through a couple corridors that usually have some treasure, and repeat until you beat the dungeon. I personally had a lot of fun with this, but I can definitely see this not being for everyone. For one, the corridors are literally copy-pasted passageways, same puzzles and hidden treasures and everything, and that starts to feel samey pretty quickly. And also since it's entirely focused on combat, if you don't like the combat, you're probably not gonna like this. But I don't know, something about knocking out waves of trash mobs, doing team takedowns, and just fiving out with three other people was really fun to me. I'd have happily paid for a full game of just this with more fleshed out combat and more diverse maps. 
This kind of feels nitpicky and I'm not usually one to care about stuff breaking immersion in video games, but I really don't like that you can have more than one of the same hero in an instance. Maybe it's the setting here or the source material, but I wish there was a character lock for the multiplayer. It's jarring to be running around Gotham as Red Hood and then have another one just drop in on you, and I feel like it diminishes some of the more team-oriented nodes in the skill trees. Like I said, this isn't anything game-breaking, but it was something that rubbed me the wrong way a little. We're gonna address the elephant in the room right from the start. Batman is actually dead. Like, for real. I was kinda constantly waiting for a big fake out moment where we find out that he somehow made it out of this. But nope, that man is gone, and I think this is really good for the story. It allows us to completely focus on the four protagonists and Batman's lasting effects on them. I don't really want to get into a lot of specifics of the story because I feel like that's one of the best parts of this game, and I want you guys to experience it for yourselves. But the Spark Notes version is that Batman died while investigating the Court of Owls, and it's up to our four heroes to find out what he was looking for and why. What I do want to explore are the four protagonists. I really like where all of these characters are in each of their journeys to becoming heroes. Jason was dead and is dealing with the after effects of being resurrected by a Lazarus pit. He's turned a new leaf and is no longer killing in an attempt to uphold Batman's ideals, but he's always been the black sheep of the Bat family and is coming to terms with his violent past. There's a cutscene where he's testing the limits of his non-lethal rounds with Tim and the Belfry that I really liked. This version of Barbara is post-Oracle, so she's already lost and regained her ability to walk and has kept a lot of those hacking skills she's picked up over the years. On top of losing Batman, she's also figuring out how to cope with the loss of her father, Jim Gordon. She tends to be the most level-headed member of the Bat family, but there were a few scenes where we get to see how much this is really taking a toll on her. Nightwing has spent time being the savior of Bloodhaven, but is now back in Gotham. He often plays a more comedic role in an attempt to keep everyone in high spirits, but he isn't giving himself time to mourn the death of his adopted father, instead focusing on making sure everyone else is alright. Since he's been at this hero thing the longest, he naturally steps up as leader during a few moments in the story, and is probably why he feels the need to take the heat off everyone else. He and Jason have this nice hot and cold thing going on, and Tim is probably the most interesting of these characters. You get the feeling that he hasn't been Robin for that long, and he seems way in over his head most of the time. As you might expect, he's taking the death of Bruce the hardest out of everyone. There's even a moment where he mentions that maybe killing the bad guys would be better, which is not something that you'd expect from the kid of the group, but the others shut this down immediately. There aren't any gratuitous flashback scenes showing the backstory of these characters, and most of this is just implied knowledge for fans in the know about them. Something that I really enjoyed. Seeing all of these characters hang out and interact with and comfort each other was without question my favorite part of the game. Something interesting that comes with having four protagonists are the different dialogue trees that play out during key moments depending on who you're playing. They did not take the easy route here. Let's look at how Harley greets Red Hood and Nightwing. Ah! Dead Hood. Looks like you've been eating well. Still big as an ox and twice as mean. <laughs> been a while, Harley. You good? Hmm. Was it too much to ask you to visit earlier? Night butt. You came. Oh, but look at you. You're getting all skinny. You gotta eat. Wouldn't want you to lose them. It's, uh, good to see you too. Uh-huh. Was it too much to ask you to visit earlier? I have to take a moment to talk about how much I love this version of Harley. She really tiptoes the line of cuckoo and evil genius, and her character design is amazing. I'm kinda tired of this character having her ass cheeks out for no real reason, so I'm glad they actually gave her some stylish thematic clothing. Anyway, even though there are a couple lines that overlap between the heroes, she says them all with a completely different cadence and tone depending on who she's talking to. This leads me to the point that I really wish there was an easy mission replay system. You can rewatch the different cutscenes if you're in multiplayer with someone who hasn't played them or in New Game Plus, but that's about it. There's a mission towards the end of the game that has your character trapped in a labyrinth facing some of their worst fears, and I'd have loved to play through this with all four of the heroes to see how different it was for each one. Lastly, I'm gonna maybe welcome some criticism here when I say that I think that this is actually a pretty good looking game. Now, obviously no, it doesn't look as good as Arkham Knight, and I've seen a lot of people upset about this. Arkham Knight has this wow factor where when you see the huge jump in visuals compared to the games before it, it's pretty mind blowing. Even by today's standards, that game looks amazing. 
Gotham Knights doesn't have that same wow factor, but what it lacks in graphical fidelity, it kind of makes up for in art direction. I'm playing on pretty mid settings just so I can get a decent recording that doesn't skip half of the available frames, but when I was messing around with the settings, I was pretty impressed with how this game looked on the higher end. What stood out to me most is that this game is a lot more colorful than Arkham Knight. When I think of Arkham Knight, the first color that comes to mind is overwhelmingly dark blue, but here I think of oranges and purples and greens, and seeing all of these colors blend together from a rooftop in Gotham was a key moment for me when I was playing through this. So while Gotham Knights might not be the continuation of the legendary Arkham series many people hoped it would be, I still think it's worth your time even if you're just a little interested. Aside from the simple combat, which isn't even all that terrible, there's a lot to love here. Good characters, a good story, and lots to do around Gotham. I'm super excited to see what direction they choose in terms of DLC. You could make an entire super team of just Batman sidekicks, so if they want to add DLC characters, they've got a lot to work with. I've already seen this game on sale for half off, but I could definitely see this being a free games with gold or free on like the Epic Game Store, so if you don't mind waiting, that might be an alternative route for you to take. Anyway, if you've made it this far, I'm going to assume that you liked the video, so do me a favor and leave a like for me. If you really liked the video, you can subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you for sticking around until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.